Oh, hi. So you clicked on this video because you want to learn something related to dentistry. Well, you are on the right place. I am Dr. Hina, the voice and soul behind Dr. Teeth. And this is the platform where we make learning interesting and incredibly easy for you. So do leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will recommend you to join channel membership to watch our premium videos. You can also visit our website for online classes, courses, and MCQs. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about bite registration. Now you must be wondering what is in bite registration, you just put a modeling wax in between the teeth and you ask the patient to bite on it and we have the bite record, right? But you know what? This is the biggest mistake we are making in our clinical practice. When I started with my MDS, I saw my seniors doing it. I saw everyone around me doing the same thing. Take a modeling wax, make it in a horseshoe shaped and ask the patient to simply bite on it and then you know, use it. But that is one of the major causes of high points in your prosthesis and hours wasted in adjustments. So in this video, I am going to talk about very important concepts that you can incorporate into your clinical practice and you can improve upon how we deliver our work. So we will see, do we need to record the bite in every case? No, we don't. Do we need to record full arch bite? Like, do we need to have full arch bite? No. And is modeling wax bite record any good? I'm telling you right away, it is a crap. You better not take a bite than to take a bite with the modeling wax. That is not the correct material for recording the bite. Use it for other purposes, not for bite record. And then finally, we will be seeing the bite registration techniques. So let's begin. Okay, so first of all, let us address this question. Do we need to record the bite in every case? The answer is no. See, we need at least four point contact, two anterior and two posterior. Like when the patient occludes, right? When the patient bites, if you have two posterior teeth intercuspating naturally and anterior two points you have which intercuspate naturally you don't need to make any kind of bite record let us suppose you did a tooth preparation here right and let us suppose we also have this tooth okay so two teeth we have prepared and now we are wondering whether we should take a bite record or not see this is the upper arch this is the lower arch when the patient will you know intercuspate that is the maximum intercuspation we have the posterior contacts right so in this case you can leave bite records no need to take bite record in this case okay but let us suppose we also did tooth preparation on this tooth now we don't have any intercuspation on this side right like when the patient will close down we won't have a fourth point of contact here. We have all the three point of contact, but not this. Now, in this case, we will need to make a bite record. Okay. Now, let us take another example. We prepared this tooth. We prepared this tooth. We prepared this tooth. Do we need bite registration here? No, because obviously we have the four point of contact maintained, right? But again, let us suppose we had to prepare this tooth also. Now we don't have the fourth point of contact. So in this case, we will need bite registration. Okay. So it can be maxillary mandibular. I'm just trying to explain it on the maxillary. You just need to ask the patient to close his mouth and check whether you have posterior contacts maintained on the natural teeth and also the anterior. Even if we have tooth preparation in all the four quadrants, as long as the posterior contact and the anterior contacts are maintained there is no need of bite records okay let us come to the second question do we need to record full arch bite like do you need to have the material all along the occlusal surface of the teeth and then you ask the patient to bite on it do you do this it's a very common practice but generally when we do this and we mount the cast it is at a raised vertical. So there is no need to record the full arch bite 
you can only record the area where you have prepared the tooth. Let me give you an example. Let us suppose we have prepared these three teeth. Let me highlight it. Okay. So these three teeth we have prepared. Okay. Now when you have to take a bite record, just inject the bite record material here and ask the patient to bite. Okay. There is no need of having the material all along the occlusal surface. You only need the area where we have prepared tooth and ask the patient to bite. And then after this material sets, take it out and cut the excess. Then intercuspate the upper and the lower cast with this bite registration and then articulate it. Coming to the third question, is modeling wax bite records any good? This is the worst material for bite registration. Why? Because modeling wax distorts very easily. Now something which distorts, you cannot make out with the naked eye whether the bite registration has undergone any changes, right? So modeling wax has a very bad property that it will distort with temperature changes, with any kind of, you know, little pressure changes. So you don't have to use modeling wax, use aloe wax. Aloe wax is aluminum reinforced material. So it has an excellent property that it does not distort. If at all you apply force, it will break. And when something breaks, you can actually know that you have to repeat the bite registration. It will not distort, it will break. Also, bite registration paste are available. Use that. Don't use modeling wax. I understand it is easily available. It's very cheap, but it can lead to a lot of problem. It's not the accurate method. Now let us talk about the bite registration technique. So first technique we have already discussed, which was an Arrhenius technique. That is, you know, having the material all along the occlusal surface and asking the patient to bite. The correct method is just put the material on the area where you have prepared the tooth, right? One more technique is there, like you ask the patient to close down. You ask the patient to close down. Let us suppose this is again the area we have prepared. The patient closes down and you inject the material from the side, okay? You inject the material while the patient is in maximum intercuspation, patient. You inject the material. Once the material sets, ask the patient to open the mouth and remove it. That is one more method of bite registration. Triple tray is an excellent way to record the bite registration. It records the upper impression, lower impression, as well as the bite in a single impression. So you can use triple tray also. Now there can be situations like the patient is not able to close properly into maximum intercuspation. So how do you deal with that? What we can do in that case? I'm just explaining it with the diagrams here. I wish I had some photographs with me. Nevertheless, I will be updating this video in the coming years <laughs> to have some clinical pictures also. So then we can understand a little better. But anyway, I don't want to miss on this important topic. So I'm covering it today itself. Okay, so in cases where the patient is unable to close into maximum intercuspation every time, what you can do, you can first inject a little material on the unprepared surface, right? Then ask the patient to bite, okay? Now when the patient bites and the material sets, okay, and you ask the patient to open his mouth, the bite material will stuck onto one of the arches, okay? Now, when you put the material on this side, like the concerned area, and ask the patient to close down with this material, the patient's teeth will automatically... <laughs> what am I saying? The patient's teeth will automatically align into maximum intercuspation because we have this material here, right? So this is one method that you can use when the patient is not able to close properly into the same, you know, maximum intercuspation again. So this was about the bite registration where we are recording the MIP of the patient that is the maximum intercuspation position. I'm sure you must be knowing that in full mouth cases, we don't have to restore the occlusion in the MIP. We have to do it in the centric relation of the patient. That's a separate topic. We can cover it in the future. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, do let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, you can comment below 
And if you have any suggestions for any other videos, let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Alhafiz.